What's up guys and welcome to FPL Today, I'm your host JNO, welcome to the channel and welcome to a new series on the channel which we're going to call Form and Fixtures where I look at some of the players in form at the moment that have a good run of fixtures that could be worth putting into your FPL side. Now of course with only 5 game weeks left it does mean that we're not going to have massive variation as I do this series. We're going to in the future, next season potentially, look at short term and long term fixtures as well as the form tables. But hopefully this is something you guys enjoy. If you do, please hit that like button to let me know if this is something you want to see in the future. But before we continue with this episode, if you love what I do on this channel and want to support me, there is the Football Blogging Awards for 2018 coming up. Right now it's in the nomination stage. You can go to the website link in the description down below or tweet the tweet in the description down below to vote for me and FPL Today in the Football Blogging Awards for the Football Gaming category. All votes would be much appreciated and you managed to get me there last time so it would be great if I can also go in 2018. But enough about that and unfortunately you're probably going to hear me say that until the Football Blogging Awards voting and nominations is over. Apologies but we'll get straight into the content now and we are starting off with a player without a double game week and that man is Andrew Robertson. At 5.1 million, he is a risk for the next game of playing or not because of the Champs League and a potential injury. However, with fixtures against Bournemouth, West Brom, Stoke, Chelsea and Brighton Hope Albion, the running for Liverpool looks pretty good. And Andrew Robertson has been on some good form recently with five starts in the last six game weeks. He's managed to get three assists, which is the best for a defender in the league out of the last six game weeks. He's created nine chances, which is second best in the league, and he's created four big chances out of those nine chances, which is, again, first in the league for a defender as far as big chance creation goes. And his minutes per chance created is 49 minutes. Ignore the percent because it's been put on the wrong one there. And goal involvement is 21%. So he looks like a good pickup for your defences at 5.1 million, even though he doesn't have a double game week. He'll be especially valuable in game week 35. The next event we're going to look at is Patrick Van Arnholt at 5.1 million as well. And again, this is someone that doesn't have a double game week. He does, however, have what looks like a decent run into the end of the season with Crystal Palace. And that's Brighton, Hove Albion, Watford, Leicester, Stoke and West Bromwich Albion. He started in six games in the last six game weeks. He's joint first for goals in the last six game weeks as well as big chances in the last six game weeks. And he's joint third for chances overall. And he is standalone first for shots on target. Minutes per chance is at 67.5 minutes and goal involvement is at 25%. He could potentially be a big differential with Crystal Palace fighting to avoid relegation. Moving on to the midfield and we start off with David Silva at 8.2 million. There is of course plenty of options you can consider in that Manchester City side but now with them out of the Champions League rotation may be less of a risk as also they do have the Premier League title to still win although it's extremely unlikely they won't win it soon but without Champions League and with players wanting to impress and get into international sides for the World Cup potentially there'll be less rotation as well as there being records that Man City could break if they keep up their winning ways. So we'll have to wait and see what Pep Guardiola's lineup is. But David Silva is the one that stands out to me because of one, his value at 8.2 million. He's one of the cheaper midfielders in that Manchester City side to get points off of. The fixtures, of course, are good for Man City with Tottenham being the really difficult fixture, which is up next. But then it's Swansea, West Ham, Huddersfield, Brighton Hove Albion and Southampton. David Silva himself has had five starts in the last six game weeks and he's managed to get three assists, created three big chances, which is joint second in the league for midfielders. And chance created overall, he's got 13, which puts him at fifth. Minutes per chance created is at 33 and his goal involvement is at 54%. But of course, many a Manchester City option could be beneficial. Just David Silva was the one that stood out to me because of value and his overall contributions to that Manchester City side in the last six game weeks. The other midfielder is from Tottenham Hotspurs, who also have a very good double game week in game week 37. Son at 8.4 million is the cheapest Tottenham Hotspurs midfield option and although recently he's not been getting the points like Christian Eriksen and Deli Alley, and of course there is the likes of Harry Kane to consider his underlying stats in the last six game weeks have been very good 
and potentially he could be someone that has a big effect on your season as everyone looks to Ericsson and Ali because of the last two game weeks. In the last six game weeks, he's started four times. He's managed to get four goals, which is the second best for a midfielder in the league. He's also got one assist. He's had 14 chances, which is joint seventh in the league. He's had six big chances, however, and I was obviously tired when I did this because I put big chances created, but it's six big chances, which puts him joint first in the league for a midfielder. Nine shots on target, which puts him joint third. And he's got a minute per chance at 22.2 minutes and also a goal involvement of 42%. But that being said, the underlying stats for Ericsson and Ali are good as well. So to be honest, as long as you have one or two Tottenham Hotspurs options in the run into the end of the season, you're probably going to be looking good. And now we move on to the strikers and first we look at Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang at 10.8 million. He doesn't actually have a double game week in game week 34, but he does have a nice run into the end of the season. He's got Newcastle and West Ham before Man United, which is the difficult fixture, then Burnley, Leicester and Huddersfield to end the season. He's had five starts in the last six game weeks and he is first out of all strikers for goals in the last six game weeks with five goals. He's also got one assist. He's had 14 chances, which puts him at joint sixth for chances. However, big chances, he's first with seven. On target, he's also first with 10 minutes per chances at 30.8 minutes and his goal involvement rate while playing is at 67%, which is extremely high. And then finally, we look at Chris Wood from Burnley. 6.3 million, a cheap striker option for you here. The fixture list running for Burnley isn't too bad with Leicester, Chelsea, Stoke, Brighton, Hove Albion, Arsenal and Bournemouth. Of course, the Chelsea and Arsenal games are going to be difficult there. However, with just two starts having, I believe, come off of an injury, Chris Wood's stats are great now Ashley Barnes's stats were extremely similar but Ashley Barnes had more game time and I still feel like Chris Wood is the favoured striker for Burnley however that could be wrong so don't necessarily be a hundred percent concrete that Wood is starting however with the few starts he's had he's got four goals which is joint second in the league for a striker one assist 11 chances which is joint ninth for a striker Big chance he's had five, which is joint third. And on target, he's joint fourth with seven. Minutes per chance at 21.9. And his goal involvement rate is at 56%. For the amount of game time he's had, those stats are incredible. And potentially he could be a leading force for Burnley up front and could be a good differential, which could make you rise in the mini leagues and hopefully get you a great end of season rank. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this video. As always, hopefully you like this new idea, this new concept of a video if you do make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell because apparently it's not enough just to click subscribe for youtube if you want all of my videos in your subscription feed and then also if you do want to vote for me in the fbas that would be much appreciated links and the wording for a tweet vote is in the description down below thank you so much for watching the video and the support you guys are always fantastic leave any comments down in the comments down below if you want to ask me any questions i'm hoping to get back to answering questions again in the comments and also we should be going live on wednesday i don't know if this video is going up tuesday night or wednesday morning or wednesday afternoon but wednesday evening we should be going live so make sure to check that out as well i've been jno this has been fpl today and remember it's all about the game